welcome. I'm Ann Jones Guider, District 4 Commission here in Douglas County. And today on District Dialogue, I have my distinguished guest of uh, Chief uh, Scott Spencer with the Fire Department. Welcome, uh, Scott. Um, you don't mind if I call you Scott? I Absolutely hope. <laughs> not. Absolutely I've known not. you so long. I, I, we, we've I think known each I've other a day or two. <laughs> yes, we have. Scott, uh, a lot of people out here know you, but there may be a lot of newcomers that don't know you. Uh, could you kind of fill us in on uh, how long you've been with the county, how long you've been chief, and, and so forth? Sure. Uh, I was very fortunate uh, and have been very fortunate. I actually got hired with the county two weeks out of high school. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, chief Wayne Arrington, who was our, our I first remember, chief. I remember. Uh, <coughs> gave me my first opportunity to be a firefighter. Uh, so I've been here for uh, this June will be 40 years. Uh, my goodness. <laughs> when Chief Arrington retired, uh, I was appointed chief of the department, uh, and that was back in 1997. So. Uh, this year will be 20 years as, as chief, which is a long time for a fire chief. That's true, yeah. Uh, uh, but before you became chief, you were actually a fireman. And, and uh, what all capacities did you serve before uh, becoming chief? I, I, I served through, uh, I was a, a firefighter. Uh, for a very short time, I did drive a truck. Uh, then I became a lieutenant. Mm -hmm. uh, a captain, a division chief, uh, and then fire chief. So, so. you've earned those stripes you have. Y yes, ma'am. <laughs> I, I feel I have. Uh, I, I also uh, was a basic EMT and then went on and got uh, cardiac technician training. Uh, so uh, that's medical training as well. Yeah, so. we're going to uh, get into <clears throat> the training of the different uh, personnel in your department in just a moment. Um, how many people are in your department? We've got uh, 156 <coughs> authorized positions, and uh, right now we've got uh, 13 uh, that, that are unfilled, mm -hmm. uh, and we're working daily to try to fill those. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we just hired a paramedic that will start next week, I believe. So They were already a paramedic when you yes. hired them? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Currently what we try to do is hire people that have uh, medical certifications mm -hmm. already uh, and then we put on our own recruit school for the, for the fire training. Okay, uh, how many fire departments, uh, how many fire stations do we have here in the county? We, we have 10 that are strategically located, uh, you know, throughout the different communities in, in the county. Uh, and, and each of those stations uh, has a pumper truck, which... Okay, you're going to have to explain that because uh, yeah. to the layman out here. Yes, yes ma'am. I, I, I apologize. I, I try not to use the, know, the, the jargon. But Your terminology is a little different sure, than the man on the streets. Sure. Actually, uh, a pumper truck, or what we call an engine, uh -huh. uh, is, is the primary unit we use to fight fire. That's what pumps the water, uh, hooks to the fire hydrants, uh, and has the tools and equipment we need to extinguish the fires. Okay. Uh, so you have to have a pumper truck. Yes. Uh, in order to uh, hook to uh, one of these fire hydrants or whatever. Y yes, ma'am. Okay. The, uh, uh, the thing about the, the pumper trucks we use, uh, they pump a minimum of 1,500 gallons of water a minute. Wow. So when you start thinking, you know, that, that's something most people can wrap their, their minds around. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of water. Okay. Uh, so it, it takes a, a pretty <coughs> pretty massive engine and, and pump to be able to do that. And those are the standard, what we call fire trucks that we see. But we, yes, then there's the more expensive fire truck, which has the ladder and the extension. Um, and they're, what are they called? Yes, ma'am. We, we call those, uh, actually we call those ladder trucks. Is uh, that an aerial? But that's an aerial device because okay. uh, we actually have uh, a platform that, that the firefighters can get in on the end of one of those ladder trucks. Right. But on our other ladder truck, uh, two ladder trucks, we just have a straight ladder. There's no platform on the, the end of it. Yeah. But they're, they're all aerial devices. Those three trucks are aerial devices. Now, with the growth of Douglas County, especially in the eastern area, uh, 
side of the uh, county. There's a lot of warehouses and, and things like that. Uh, we don't have a lot of uh, two-story, four-story, four five-story <laughs> buildings here, but we do have uh, some. But the main thing is the uh, uh, warehouses down there. They're so huge and they're very tall and everything. So you have to have that kind of equipment uh, because of uh, to distinguish fires, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. The the uh, the aerial devices allow us to have an elevated fire stream, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to be able to put the water on, on the fire from, from high above. Yeah. Uh, the good thing about those large buildings is most of them are sprinklered, uh, required by code, by uh -huh. the county code, uh, and have their own fire pump uh, so you assigned just hook to that up building. To that. You don't have to look for a hydrant when you get there. <laughs> well, the, the, that system is hooked into it, so it, uh, which, uh, that, that really uh, is you know, help, helps us a lot. So. Yeah, okay. Uh, now, speaking of aerial trucks, uh, I've got a cost of some of them. Uh, they're about a, a million dollars. Yes, ma'am, that's. Uh, some people may, may not realize that your equipment is so much more expensive. You could buy a lot of cars mm -hmm. uh, for a million dollars, but that's just one vehicle. So your uh, budget uh, has to be high because of the, the, not only the number of employees that you have, but the expense of your equipment that you have. Yes, ma'am. Pretty much all of our equipment uh, is expensive. Uh, you, you would think that... It ain't cheap. <laughs> that, that, that a, for example, a, uh, an ax. <laughs> you know, you can go to Ace Hardware uh, or Home Depot or, or Lowe's and buy an axe, uh, but in order to meet the fire service standards, that same axe that you would pay thirty bucks for uh, cost us, you know, hundred bucks. So, yeah, our, our equipment is specialized, uh, and, and that's the reason the cost, because uh, it has to be able to withstand. Yeah the rigors of firefighting. Yes. Well, like I said, the uh, aerial um, trucks with the ladders and stuff like that are like close to a million dollars yes, with all the equipment and everything. But you, you talked about the pumper truck. Uh, they're about $400,000 Between four hundred and five hundred thousand. dollars and 500000 yes, ma'am. Yes. And then ambulances cost uh, around uh, 140000 uh, and, and once equipped, you know, they can go up to 200000 yes. So it's, uh, like I say, all of our equipment, uh, because it, it's life safety equipment, that, that's what makes it's the specialized difference. specialized equipment. Is, it is specialized. Now, uh, when, how often do you replace equipment? How many miles do you have on it uh, uh, before you need to replace it? Well, we, we try to make our uh, ambulances last four to five years in frontline status and then a couple of more years after that. So you that don't go strictly by miles? We, we don't. Because uh, you have to leave it running, right? Exactly. Uh, I don't know if that uh, increases the uh, wear on the motor. Oh, I, I, absolutely it does. Uh, on one of our, our fire trucks, uh -huh. uh, when they're at a fire pumping, mm -hmm. uh, that engine is revved up and, you know, uh, the, the RPMs are, are high. Uh, That's why you can't go strictly by the miles. Exactly. It's because it's the wear on the motor it, itself. You're, you're the exactly engine. right. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, um, well, uh, about two years ago, there was some bad publicity about the fire department, especially our equipment and everything. And um, I'm not going to elaborate too much, but uh, you being the largest department under the Board of Commissioners, control, mm -hmm. not under another elected official like the sheriff's office or something like that, but uh, in the largest budget, uh, often you got the cuts uh, by the uh, county administrator at that time, at that time, because I saw where you had put in every year for in your budget for additional personnel, additional uh, equipment and everything, but you got cut because, and I'm I'm not justifying anything uh, mm -hmm. because uh, the times that's when we were going through the depression and everything and 
things had to be cut, but uh, y'all got a kind of a bad reputation in, in a sense because of that, which was no fault of your own because uh, if you don't have the funds, you can't buy the equipment. So a lot of your equipment was spending some time in fleet, but since that time, let's go forward yes, and see what has been corrected since that time. First of all, uh, the county has hired uh, a mechanic that specializes on your type equipment because it does take a different kind of certification, right? Yes, ma'am. And, and so he's dedicated to getting your equipment in and out because when it's out of service, there's a gap out here somewhere. We, we, we're, we're very fortunate that we have what we call reserve units. Yes which if, if one of our frontline trucks uh, is at fleet to be, uh, to have routine maintenance done mm -hmm. on it, uh, we can move the equipment onto that reserve truck and put it in the station so that we're still providing that coverage, it's mm -hmm. just not with that frontline truck. Right. So, and, and yes, the, uh, the addition of that mechanic uh, has made a tremendous impact uh, in, in the availability of our units. Because often we had to send the equipment somewhere else to be yes, fixed. Yes, we uh, did. But now that we've got our own dedicated uh, uh, mechanic for your purposes. Yeah, uh, I think last year it, it saved uh, somewhere around $200,000 just by being been, able to do, so that's that, that's We're great all about for, saving money. <laughs> absolutely we are. But since uh, 2000, about the middle of 2015, we've added a pumper truck Mm -hmm. uh, four ambulances, and then this is an emergency one pumper truck. Uh, is that not the same as that other pumper truck? Well, it, it was just a different manufacturer. Oh, uh, okay. So, but so two pumper trucks. We, we've four actually ambulances. added three pumper trucks three. because we leased one okay. as well. Okay. So, so three pumper trucks and four ambulances since. And a bush truck. And a brush truck. Brush. Okay. Yeah, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I, I thought it was a bush truck. <laughs> well, uh, and it does put fire out in the in, out in, in the bushes. It okay. sure does. It's, okay. <laughs> uh, so we're we're very proud of, of what we've been able to accomplish. Uh, so uh, through through being funded through the board of commissioners and yeah, and, yeah so we certainly appreciate that. Uh, and uh, you you've become a priority with us, I think. <laughs> um, we've even uh, the the new chair. A uh, person has uh, appointed me and uh, Commissioner Mulcair on a fire and EMS committee to yes, meet with you, find out what your needs are so that we can make recommendations back to the entire board. And we, we've already had one meeting. I thought it was very enlightening because I think y'all feel comfortable enough with us that you can be honest Absolutely. and then we, we can be comfortable enough and maybe we could even suggest different avenues. Sure. Um, now the splash is coming up. Yes ma'am. Um, it will start I think in about April uh, as far as the collection part of it. Now uh, a fire and EMS, uh, fire and EMS and well public safety was allocated 32 percent of the dollar. Yes ma'am. So to speak. And um, we have a schedule of uh, equipment that we will be buying in each year mm -hmm. for your department. Yes, ma'am. And uh, some of this requires additional staffing, too. So could you elaborate? Is it an expansion of the equipment you already have, or is it uh, replacing uh, Most, uh, it's a little of both. Uh, we will be replacing equipment uh, so that the trucks that are in service now will be relegated down to reserve status. Mm -hmm. Some of the reserve status trucks that we have now will probably be auctioned off, uh, you know, to whoever wants to buy them. Uh, yeah. cause I think are, we do it over the internet. <laughs> right. Uh, These smaller communities. <laughs> but w one of the projects in, in the 2017 SPLOST is uh, to build Station 9 uh, down in the Thornton Road corridor. Which we already have the land for. We, we do. We, we, we do. got a bargain on the land during the recession and yes, everything. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, um, and, and we already have some preliminary plans for that station, uh, you know, drawn up as, as to what it may. Now, the splash is uh, for a period of about six years. 
So, um, because that's going to require a whole lot of new staffing and everything, it, it could be further on down into the, the term of the splash. Um, uh, we've got to address the priority needs first right. and, and foremost. And, uh, but the station will be on Douglas Hill, yes, which is right there close to all those warehouses that we were talking about. And it's badly needed in that area because of the commercial growth yes, there. And um, so, um, but Station 9 is what you're talking about, and we're going to build it. I don't know exactly when. I think it will be at least a few years down, uh, down the road. But one of the biggest items that uh, was included in the splash was the radio system. Now, that's not just for the fire department, it's also for the uh, sheriff's office. Could you uh, share with the public some of the problems you have incurred from the old uh, radio system, the dangerous? Y yes, ma'am. We, uh, our radio system here in the county has evolved over the years. Uh, when I first started, you know, 40 years ago, <laughs> uh, we actually had a uh, radio system that was uh, called low band. Uh, the low band system, you could talk long distances, but it wasn't clear, and you would also hear people like from New York on our radio channel. Oh my channel. goodness, yeah. yeah. So, so, so it was busy. <laughs> so it, it was busy. Uh, then we went to uh, uh, a VHF system, which is a very high frequency system, uh, and it worked better, but we still had dead spots. A band aid. A band aid. It, it, it was a band aid. Okay. Uh, we, we tried that for a while, and then we put another band aid on it. Mm -hmm. uh, digital. Digital. Mm -hmm. Now, in all that, the, the Federal Communications Commission uh, decided that they had to narrow band these frequencies, which basically cut the frequency that you were strength really? in half. Oh my goodness. Which which caused us some but major problems. But they didn't help us fund No, they replacing. absolutely did not. Typical. Uh, that, that was one of Typical. those unfunded <laughs> mandates. So we, we uh, the what we think will be our, our ultimate system uh, is actually uh, an 800 system. 800 megahertz. Megahertz. Yes. Uh, which will penetrate buildings. Uh, that, and, and that was one of the problems y'all were having. Yes. Once you went inside of a burning building, you lost communication to the outside. And, Oftentimes we did. Very, very dangerous. So, so, so we, we are, uh, <coughs> we actually have a, uh, so, some meetings scheduled with a consultant for the 800 radio mm -hmm. system. Uh, uh, we've got one today and then one next week, and mm -hmm. hopefully we'll be uh, recommended to the board. Well, I've heard a price tag of anywhere between 10 to 16 million. <laughs> hopefully it's, it's going to be on the 10 million end of it, but we, we don't know that. Uh, right. This is a specialized field. Uh, we have to have people that are in the know advise us on, yes, on some of this, so that's what we're waiting on. Um, <clears throat> Would you, let's uh, switch um, sides here uh, and uh, go to uh, the personnel. Now before, not only did you have a shortage of equipment, mm -hmm. um, there were some frozen positions in your, in your uh, department that have now been unfrozen. Yes ma'am. All, all positions have been unfrozen. Uh, also, um, recruiting uh, uh, firefighters and everything was a problem mainly because we required that they were also a certified EMT, right? Yes, ma'am. Um, tell the people what we're doing now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we did realize that, that requiring that medical certification prior to hiring mm -hmm. uh, was causing us issues in being able to hire people. So last year, we actually conducted an in-house EMT class. Uh, 
And what we basically did is we, we had a fairly rigorous program to, to, uh, to determine who would get into the, 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 the system. Mm -hmm. uh, and once we, we did that, uh, we had uh, a total of 15 people uh, that, that made the initial cut. Uh, by the time everything was done and said, uh, uh, that was 12 people for the class and then three alternates. Uh, we ended up using all three alternates because people said, you know, look, this isn't for me, uh, or I can't, I can't do it, and mm -hmm. so then the alternate would come in. Uh, so of the 12 people that finished the class, uh, we, we ended up with 11 of them on staff. That's so, great. Uh, they passed all the tests, and uh, so we had about a, uh, I think it was a 92% pass rate. So I mean, that, that was wonderful. So as of today, we don't, we are not in the market for e, any more EMTs. Is that true? I, as of today, no. <laughs> However, we've got six firefighter slots that are open. Okay. So uh, are unfilled. Okay. Uh, and what we anticipate is some of our EMTs will be transferring into those positions. So probably by May, Mm -hmm. We'll open up some, some EMT positions again. The other thing that we're doing, uh, uh, what, what probably... This is something new, too. Yes, th this yeah. is a, a, a totally new program that we're doing this year, is a, a paramedic program. Now, we are working with a, uh, an outside agency, mm -hmm. uh, a private school, to, uh, to do this. Uh, the commissioners were gracious and funded, funded this program for us this year. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're right now in, in uh, the contracts are with legal. Everybody's looking at those, mm -hmm. and as soon as they give us the green light, we'll be starting that program. Now, it'll take probably 14 months for them to get through this program. Uh, but the, the good part about this is these people are already hired. They're, As a fireman. They're, they are working on staff right now. Uh -huh. They will actually go to school on their days off. Fantastic, so, yeah. What we think that's that's going to just be a tremendous thing. Paramed for us. Paramedics are hard to come by. Th they uh, are. They are. Uh, the market for them, are, the price is way up here under, in the private sector, <clears throat> and the county pays a little bit <laughs> further down. But uh, a lot of people like working in their community. Absolutely. So, uh, you want to take this time and recruit somebody and tell them where to go if they're looking for a job with your department. Uh, sure. Uh, you can go to the county website, uh, CelebrateDouglasCounty.com, uh, go to the Human Resources Department, mm -hmm. uh, and you can download an application. Okay. Uh, uh, those applications have to be filled out uh, and turned in here at the courthouse, and then we take it from there and do our background checks, interviews, uh, physical testing, you know, physical ability testing, uh, uh, any other testing that, that we need to, to do. Now, um if you decide that you want to work for the county and everything, and you want to go to this school, and the county is paying for this school, you also have to sign a contract with the county. Uh, would you explain that? Yes, ma'am. For for our EMT school, yes, uh, we we actually uh, required our our students to sign a contract saying that the money that we spent on them, if they did not complete the school or did not agree to work for us uh, two years after the school, then they would have for to pay at us least back two years. For at least two years. Okay. Yes, so we can recoup anybody that we train, and then they leave. Right. And and that has been a problem in the past. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. Yeah. For for a long time, we were a training ground. <laughs> Folks would come here and be trained, <laughs> and then and go it, to then the private to sector. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I think we've touched on most of everything. Is there anything else that you would like to bring up? Uh, let's let's talk about. First of all, uh, the advanced life support, the ALS trucks, okay. which is uh, more than just a fire truck. But why? W the question we get <clears throat> from everybody mm -hmm. on the street is, why does a fire truck go out when the ambulance goes out? That's an excellent <laughs> question. Excellent question. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of times, it, it depends on what the call is. Uh, Probably 85% of our calls are medical calls. 
medical emergencies. Mm -hmm. or that's, that's what people call in for, is a medical emergency. How many calls a day do y'all usually respond to? Uh, as of today, we're averaging about 48 calls a day. Wow. Uh, so uh, that's pretty significant. Yeah. Uh, and so the, the reason we send the fire truck out, if uh, let's say the call comes in as a person having chest pain. Mm -hmm. Which okay. indicates a heart attack could, or something like could, that. Could most definitely be a heart attack. Our, our 911 center has what they call emergency medical dispatch cards. So they ask you several questions. Now, while they're asking you those questions, they, they've already dispatched the trucks. So mm -hmm. the trucks are coming to you. But they're going to ask you questions. Okay, well, does the pain radiate? You know, uh, you got pain anywhere else? Well, my arm's tingling. Mm -hmm. You know, are you having shortness of breath? What? So based on what the caller says uh, determines what we send. So, okay. so when we send that fire truck and ambulance, let's say we get to, to that person that's having a, a cardiac event, okay? So we've got two people on the ambulance and we have three people on the, the fire truck. So heaven forbid this person actually goes into cardiac arrest, okay? So we've got to do CPR. Okay, it takes two people to do CPR. So if I, I always send, <laughs> if I always send as the ambulance, <clears throat> then we've got somebody that's going to be pushing on the chest, and we've got somebody that's going to be breathing for that person. Gotcha. So, so there's our two people on the ambulance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so we can do CPR till the cows come home, but if we don't take that person to the hospital, you know, we really hadn't accomplished a whole lot. Mm -hmm. So that engine crew that responds with the ambulance. We'll take one of rescue, the guys. Rescue, rescue engine. No. No, no ju uh, just a regular oh, engine. Oh, the fire truck. Okay, yes. I got you. Be because 93% <coughs> of our personnel are cross-trained as both firefighters and EMTs. So That's you've important got, to know that if a fire truck comes to your place, you, you've still got medical help. You do have medical help. A and we, we've got a lot of medical equipment on that fire truck. We, we have automatic and defibrillators. AED, yeah. On every fire truck, uh, we've got what we call jump kits, which which allow us to do a lot of the first aid type stuff mm -hmm. and uh, get ready for transferring over to the ambulance. Uh, so one of our guys off a fire truck, more than likely, will either get in the back and help with CPR, mm -hmm. or they will drive the ambulance to the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, occasionally, we will, if it's a, a bad call. Uh, like a, a let's say a vehicle accident uh, that we need more than five people. Yeah. Uh, you know we'll have four people in the back and, and one person driving to the hospital, and we'll leave that fire truck sitting on the side of the road, and then <laughs> then we'll go get the fire truck from you know some that other station. That expensive fire truck. <laughs> yes. Uh, but life always trumps <coughs> yes, everything yes. else. So we. Uh, okay. Um, I have had uh, people ask me this too. Um, uh, I'm close to uh, this fire station. However, when we had an emergency, it came from a different fire station. Mm -hmm. Could you kind of explain that? Sure. Uh, the, the fallacy that, that most people tend to think is just because there's a fire station <laughs> a block from that's my house. That's their fire station. <laughs> that's my fire station. There's always going to be a fire truck and an ambulance in that fire station. And unfortunately, that is not true because the 48 calls we run each yes, day. Yes, yes. You may have the ambulance from Fair Play actually running a medical call down in Lithia Springs. So yeah. that that ambulance is not in in that station. So if if it, if that fire station already has a call, then it then help's got to come from Th another. Then the next closest station. Okay. And uh, as busy as we are, it may be not the next closest, but the next closest station yeah. that actually has to respond. So uh, th that's that's why uh, you know it's important. Uh, we try to keep our equipment. You know, uh, we we move equipment from one station to another mm -hmm. if we see we've got a hole in our coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to do that on a regular basis. So, but that <laughs> but but yeah, it's it's uh, a lot of folks think well, wh where's my my ambulance or, or my fire truck. So, so if we're having an emergency, we sh we should uh, breathe easier, knowing even if a fire truck pulls out up instead of the ambulance, there's people on there that can 
helps. Absolutely, help stabilize. Help, help stabilize uh, the situation and everything. Right. And that's that's uh, nice to know. And I think our uh, um, plan is to make all the fire trucks uh, what we call advanced life support, yes, where they have more equipment to sustain life until the ambulance gets there or whatever. Right, and 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 you can't move them until move a person until you've sustained. Them. Right. And, and, and a lot of times, uh, we'll actually stay on the scene for 10 or 15 minutes, stabilizing the patient, working the patient, uh, you know, going through our first round of drugs in a cardiac arrest mm -hmm. uh, before we'll transport. Uh, so it's not uncommon for us to, to be there for a while. Mm -hmm. So, And the other thing that, that a lot of folks don't realize, if we have major trauma, uh, you know, a bad car wreck, mm -hmm. uh, if, if it meets certain criteria, that person is going to go to a trauma center. Well, our closest level one trauma it's center Grady. is Grady and, and AMC, yeah. uh, the old Georgia Baptist downtown. Okay. Okay. So I think if, if the, uh, the ambulance in fair play has to go to, to Grady. Right. They're out of you know, service th that's, out that's here. That's a yeah. three-hour trip yeah. down there getting the patient offloaded, doing their paperwork, mm -hmm. getting back. So that means we're down, you know, the coverage in, in right. the county. Now, one thing uh, that, that uh, the commissioners allowed us to do is put another rescue truck in service. So we now have an ambulance down at Station 6 off Riverside Drive. So, okay. so that, that we, we've got a total of uh, seven ambulances. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and then we have uh, the the stations that that don't have an ambulance. They have the LL. The two of them have have an advanced life support engine okay. in that station. Okay. So we're only short <coughs> really one that we need to to make ALS. Yeah. Uh, in, in the, uh, so we're, we're making progress. Uh, making a lot of progress. We're, we're sure trying. Yeah. <laughs> we're sure trying. Well. Uh, I, for one, appreciate all that uh, <clears throat> your department does, as well as uh, you know, public safety in general. But um, you know, y'all put your your lives in danger for us. Uh, you go into burning buildings to save people, and and uh, it takes a calling that, to do something like that. Uh, just like I think it takes a calling to be a paramedic uh, because. Uh, not anybody, you know, I'd faint at the sight of blood, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, people are just called to do different things. And, and, but I appreciate y'all's service and your dedication to this county. I appreciate all that you have done uh, here in the county as chief in uh, um, 40 years. I, I got to figure out what I'm going to do when I grow up. I mean, <laughs> Well, I've been here pretty much. Uh, yeah, more than you, that. you and I go back a, a, a day let's or two. Don't, let's don't get too technical. Yeah, there. just a day or two. <laughs> but thank you so much, uh, Chief, for being here. I think uh, we've answered may, maybe some questions sure. that the general public may have that they always wanted to ask and never could. So hopefully, uh, this has uh, been enlightening to them. But I appreciate you being here. Well, I'd, I'd like to say if if anybody has questions and and, and would like to talk to me, uh, they can call our administrative office and we'll be glad to talk to them. So, okay. Uh, just, uh, and, and I appreciate the opportunity just to, to share some, some of the stuff that we're doing. So, okay. Thank well, you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for joining uh, District Dialogue today. Uh, I hope that we have uh, been not only entertaining but informative. So, uh, I, I look forward to the next time. Thank you very much.